have a lot of canvas and wood panel prep to do today before I can actually start a new painting. I thought I would show you my process, give you my best tips, maybe it could help someone, specifically on how to prep wood panels. If you want to go straight to the steps to follow, here is the timestamp. I want to mention a few things about using a wood panel to paint versus a canvas. Wood panels like these have been around for a few years now and when I discovered them I really really liked them. The reason I would go for a wood panel instead of a canvas is because I love introducing graphite and charcoal to my paintings to do some line work and contour lines and maybe a bit of shading in certain areas. And as you can imagine with a wood panel it's a hard surface and it's very smooth so it's perfect for charcoal or graphite as well as oil pastel and other pastels as opposed to canvas which is fabric so you have that fabric texture and also it sinks in because it's canvas so it makes it a little bit more difficult to draw especially with graphite it's still doable but it's less user friendly so when I have a mixed media painting, I prefer wood panels. And honestly, in general, if I buy a bunch of canvases, a wood panel gives me more option because I could use just acrylic if I want to, but I could also use it as a mixed media type of surface. I know a few of you like oil pastels. I actually painted a portrait in oil pastel using wood panel and it works really well. The thing is with wood panel, and that's the purpose of this whole video, is you have to really prep them. The reason for that is that wood is porous, so if it was not prepped, it would soak up a bunch of paint, essentially waste a lot of paint. So the first step would be to seal it. And also there's acids, natural acids in the wood that could kind of change the colors over time. So sealing the wood will prevent all of that. Here are the steps. For foolproof painting protection, the way to do it is to use a GAC 100 by Golden. It's kind of like a glue medium type of thing that will completely seal the porous nature of wood and act as a barrier between wood and your pigment. Ideally, two good coats of GAC 100 should do the job with a nice sanding in between the two coats and of course allowing each coat to fully dry before going to the next step. Then I go in with gesso. The purpose of gesso is to create a very matte surface that will help the paint stick to the surface. The second purpose of gesso is to create a nice white background. Wood panels are usually light beige or brown, so having that white background really helps to put whatever color I want as a background. Same as GAC 100, I'll put two to three coats of gesso on my surface. I like using a sponge brush for this, I think it works well and it doesn't leave the brush marks and strokes. I make sure that each coat of gesso is fully dried before putting another one. And again, I make sure I sand down everything in between each coat to make sure that there's no bumps or texture on my surface. When it comes to drawing times, I like to wait about an hour in between each coat. But before putting gesso on top of the GAC 100, I would leave my second coat of GAC 100 to dry overnight to make sure that that's fully, fully dried. And then I would apply gesso, wait an hour, apply a second coat of gesso. When it comes to sanding, ideally it would be smart to sand in between each layer to make sure that everything is perfect, that there's no speck of nothing and the surface is smooth. I must confess that I don't do that. I'll make sure that I put an even layer that there's no bumps or glops of whatever I'm putting down. So even layers and I sand only twice. I sand after my second coat of GAC 100 once it's fully dried at overnight. Then I sand my final coat of gesso. The only exception to that is if I see specks forming for whatever reason, dust or whatever, if I see something on my surface that isn't smooth then I will make sure the surface is dry and I would sand that little bit 
but I don't sand every layer like four times. I don't. I sand twice. And that works well enough for me. So by doing four coats of protection, two GAC and two gesso, I feel like that's a foolproof prep for a wood panel. And you can use pretty much anything on that. Acrylic paint, oil paint, oil pastels, charcoal, anything. Depending on your needs and how much of a protection you want for your artwork, you might decide to skip the GAC 100 step. The only thing to note is that gesso is not a foolproof sealant, so it will give some kind of layer of protection against color alteration with time, but it's not a foolproof thing. It's not meant to be a sealant. It's more meant to be a white background and a surface that will help the paint stick down to a very smooth surface. That's the purpose of it. Whereas GAC 100 is meant to really seal the surface, go into the tiny little wood grain grooves, prevent the chemicals from the wood to alter the colors and all that. And one thing I would say is that when I go to the art supply store to buy canvases and wood panels and so on, I usually buy more than one. I buy a few depending on my budget that day or if there's a sale. And what I used to do would be to just put them aside and know that I have a canvas or a wood panel whenever inspiration strikes. But I don't do that anymore. The best thing to do, in my opinion, is to prep canvases as soon as I get them because the process of putting a layer, waiting for it to dry, sanding, putting another layer, you get a picture. It takes a while. So I have a big session of prepping a bunch of canvases and wood panels. It takes me a good chunk of time, but then they're done. And when inspiration strikes, I can start to paint right away, as opposed to having a great idea for painting, pulling a wood panel and knowing that I have a few hours to go before I can actually start to paint. So when I buy two, three, four wood panels and I get home, sometimes it's daunting to think, oh, I have to prep all these, I don't feel like it, but my future self will be really happy when it's done and she can just pull anything and start to paint. It took me a few mojo crushing downer to kind of figure that one out, but I thought I would share because it's a good one to avoid. I'd be curious to know if you've ever tried to paint on wood panels or how you use wood panels. If you use it for a specific medium, if you prefer canvas versus wood panels or vice versa, let me know your thoughts on wood panels. And if you want more art tips and inspiration, you can watch this one next and I'll see you in a few days for another one.